Uhuru. Uhuru comrades, uh, this is Mwazi Odom, and I want to welcome everybody to a very special and urgent meeting of the Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition. Um, I want to appreciate um, everybody who was on the call today who answered the urgent call for us to, you know, unite and to, you know, bring everybody into this meeting to lay out the plans um, as we are approaching these presidential campaigns um, to make the demands that have been, you know, on the on the minds and the struggles of the people. Um, and, and I'm going to talk more a little bit about that. But before I go any further, I just want to, again, say that I am the chairperson of the Hands Off Uhuru, Hands Off Africa uh, defense campaign. This counteroffensive that was, you know, initiated following the uh, July 29 attacks on the African People's Socialist Party and the and the Uhuru movement with the attempt to crush the Black Revolution, um, you know, the Black Power, you know, uh, movement of the 1960s. And as we can see it continuing here today in the um, in its representation, as we know it, as the African People's Socialist Party and its leader, Chairman Amalia Shetela, um, as well as other members of the um, of the Uhuru movement who were attacked um, on that day. And I want to bring up also my co-MC, uh, comrade uh, Penny Hess, who is um, also um, uh, Uhuru comrade, who is also um, facing uh, charges uh, along with uh, Jesse Neville, uh, <clears throat> members of the Uhura movement who are facing indictments and um, uh, by the federal government and are facing trial later on this year. And this campaign is here to defend and to make the chart, make the demand to drop the charges on the Uhura three. So I want to appreciate you, comrade, for being on. And um, we have a PowerPoint that we're going to pull up to just give everybody an overview about what this meeting is about, why we are here on today, and um, and. And then we're gonna, you know, get a chance to introduce and to, uh, you know, the speakers overall as well. And so in today's meeting, comrades, we want to use this opportunity to lay out the plans for an uncommitted campaign, um, which will take place during the presidential elections or during the presidential primaries for, you know, all these demands, demands on reparations, stopping gentrification, police violence, mass incarceration, the demand to free Leonard Peltier and, and, and all political prisoners, um, as well as the support for, um, you know, victory to Palestine and the Palestinian people who are facing this assault by the illegitimate Israeli state. Uh, and so this emergency meeting was was called by the Hands Off Who Fight Back Coalition and the anti-colonial free speech movement to unite with the Black is Back Coalition for this uncommitted vote campaign to get Black people's issues onto the ballot and into the public arena of the presidential um, elections. And we stand in unity, unconditional unity with the Palestinian people who are in this common trajectory with, um, you know, with this, you know, with this, uh, who have initiated this uncommitted uh, voter initiative. And so again, we want to put the black agenda on the ballot. We want to vote uncommitted in the primaries, and we want to again um, stand in deep solidarity with the Palestinian movement and make all of our votes count and make the demand to drop the charges on the Uhuru three. So uh, next slide. Uh, we are streaming, comrades, on um, oh uh, slide number two. There we go. We are streaming on youtube and also on facebook so we want to encourage uh you know those who are on and who want to see more people join us please tell everybody to go to hands off or to tinyurl.com slash vote for uhuru to join this meeting if you want to come in um as well and um i want to also take a moment to salute um our bold and fierce leadership chairman omalia shatella who is the leader of the african people's socialist party and the uhuru movement and you know the reason why um, I know I am here on today and who has really um, shaped the understanding that we have in this world to understand, you know, colonialism, colonialism as a mode of production and and that we have the antidote. We have the cure for how to overturn this parasitic system that is built on the oppression of African and all oppressed peoples of the world. I also want to salute Deputy Chair Onazene Yeshitela, uh, who has, you know, brought this vision of African internationalism, this theory of practice into concrete representations of the, um, you know, um, on the ground that you can see in St. Louis. And again, these are the reasons why, um, you know, you know, some of the very important reasons why the African People's Socialist Party came under attack because of the work of Deputy Chair Ozen, um, um, Onazene Yeshitela, who is continuing to, you know, occupy all of this, you know, territory, taking it back from the hands, um, 
you know, of the thieves, right, of the real criminals and putting it in the power, you know, put, putting the power back in the hands of the people. You can see this in the One Africa, One Nation farmers market on the ground in St. Louis. You can see this with the Gary Brooks Community Garden. You can see this with all the other projects of the Black Power Blueprint, such as the Black Power Vanguard Basketball Court. And those of you who are going to be coming to St. Louis, you know, over the next few months, you're going to see some of these projects on the ground. There are too many, too many to show right now in this overview. <laughs> But, um, you know, all of this has led to and is the reason why um, we are facing these charges. Next slide. And making this demand to drop the charges on the Uhuru Three, Chairman Amalia Shatella, Penny Hess, and also Jesse Neville, who you will also be hearing from today during, um, during this uh, webinar. And again, uh, for those of you who have not seen the video, who have, um, you know, we normally do show that in these um webinars we you know and we may be able to show it at some point if um if time allows in the future but we do want to let everybody know that you can um if you go to tinyurl.com slash f uh july 29 raids you can actually watch the video of the raids um this is some footage that we were able to capture but this is just some of what happened on that day when the fbi tried to assassinate our leadership um you know arrest our leadership and then also steal documents, um, broke down windows with, you know, tanks and, you know, occupying the African community. And so this was an assault on the African liberation struggle. And uh, so part of this fight back that we have been in for almost two years now, fighting back against the colonial state, we have built an anti-colonial free speech coalition, the anti-colonial um, uh, free speech coalition in the body of the Hands Off for Huru Fight Back Coalition. And this is made up of over 40 organizations um, and individuals who have united with, with um, you know, building this, um, this non-sec, this non-sectarian um, coalition that comes together around various issues and demands that we all want to see happen in this lifetime and making the demand to drop the charges against the Uhuru Three. And so the Fight Back Coalition has united with the Blackest Back Coalition's vote uncommitted campaign to get Black people's issues on the ballot and onto the public arena in this, you know, during these presidential primaries and at the presidential election. So we want to really salute um, one of, um, you know, uh, our, our comrades and the organization of the Black is Back Coalition who is leading this really important um, um, initiative, um, you know, in terms of the, you know, Black vote. And here we are, we really want to, you know, like a lot of people have questions, like what is this vote uncommitted? You know, how did this come about? And we want to, you know, recognize that this struggle to vote uncommitted was led by Muslim and you know the Arab population in Michigan who were in opposition and and in righteous opposition to 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 Biden the you know the the Biden administration who was leading this assault on the Palestinian people in Gaza and Palestine overall and so we want to you know recognize that and and you know we unite with this um you know with with this initiative and which is why we are here on today to be able to forward this um this initiative led by the Palestinian uh Palestinian people and supporters <clears throat> all of this comrades is why it is so important that we show up that we show up in September on the ground in Tampa Florida for the you know for the trial the 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 state has rejected the motions to dismiss we want to encourage anybody if you want to read the court documents about the hands off for huru campaign go to handsoffforhuru.org um, you can click the about tab and you can click court documents and you can read read the documents as we say read read it and just look and see how bogus these charges are and and that we have a brilliant uh, you know legal team that has written a brilliant motion to dismiss these charges and the rejection of these you know you know by the magistrate judge saying that you know we're going to go to trial and so we're going to be there comrades we're going to be there on the ground and we want everybody to mark your calendars for September 3rd um, as we continue to provide more you know information about how we will be there on the ground to make this make this this demand to drop the charges so we also want to recognize um something that this Hands off, um, um, who are fight back coalition has adopted and you know, honored to take up the defense to free Leonard Peltier. We say not one more year, you know, and all political prisoners. And we just want to continue to salute the comrades of the Leonard Peltier ad hoc committee and to say that, um, that 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 we are committed to free Leonard Peltier, who has been in prison for um, over 40 years. Um, you know, lockdown on indigenous land and indigenous men, you know, defending the, you know, people. And this is, this, 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 this all has to end. And so we want to really salute um, those comrades. 
So um, for today, we're very excited to have uh, Brother Cam Howard, uh, who is a um, who is the founder of Reparations United and has done extensive, you know, research on the Black vote, the power of the Black vote, and just always gives very dynamic presentations. So we're going to hear from Comrade um, Cam Howard on today um, on this call. We're also going to be hearing from chairperson of the Make Our Votes Count campaign, which is, you know, why we are here on today. We're going to hear from Chimarenga Selimbao, who's going to break it down and give us a little bit more information about how this is going to look and what we should expect. And of course, we will also hear a political overview and just an analysis to help us to continue to tie this all together by Chairman Amalia Shatella, who, as we know, is the, um, is the leader of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement. And uh, we cannot go any further without just continuing to really, really support, uh, you know, thank our supporters and our volunteers. Um, you know, without you all, we would not be in this position to be able to continue to wage this, this, this fight back to fund our legal team. Um, and, and, you know, on that note, I want to also salute our legal team um, and the whole committee of the Hands Off for Who, um, you know, Fight Back Coalition. But, you know, we do have a really amazing legal team who, um, is is as they are building, so has been quoted, a bulletproof defense. And we are looking forward to, you know, our day in trial and beating these, you know, charges before we even get there. So I do want to just, again, thank our supporters. And also, uh, next slide, our legal team, as I had mentioned, um, this is just some of them with the Uhuru Three um, in, in front of the courthouse last September when we went to present our motion to, to dismiss the charges. And this slide that you see here is probably outdated again because we um, want to, you know, say that this struggle to raise the resources for for phase one, um, you know, of this fight back was to get the legal team was to be able to put this out there into the world and to, you know, make tours and be able to put the, you know, get the who are three out in the world. But phase two of this, you know, of this process is going to take, you know, like hundred thousand dollars for us to raise to be able to again get all the legal expenses that are going to be required you know for this legal battle as well so we want to say that our goal for today is to raise five hundred dollars towards the hands off or who are legal fund and we're going to talk more about some of the ways where even just our ability to try to raise money has has also come under attack and um, we're going to hear from uh, jesse neville who's going to give us more information about that um in just a moment um, so comrades, without further ado, and um, before I, you know, completely stop talking until we turn it over, I do want to see if there's anything that um, um, my co-MC comrade uh, Penny would like to say before we hop into today's um, meeting. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru, powerful overview. This is going to be a very exciting meeting and campaign. So let's get started. Thank right you for, for presenting that. Very powerful. Uhuru, comrade. Thank you for being here. And with that note, we're going to um, turn it over to, actually, we're going to invite up uh, Brother Cam Howard. And I know uh, some comrades were just getting in place. So if Cam is not here, I will, we can move. Hey, there you are. <laughs> Uhuru, Cam. <laughs> You're on the hot seat. You just. Uhuru, my sister. Yeah. Oh, Uhuru. my God. Okay. Uhuru, Great. Yep. Everything looks good. Great. Um, so we just want to appreciate you for being here, comrade, and, you know, the floor is yours. So Uhuru. Well, much appreciated and much appreciate this campaign, the Uncommitted uh, Vote Campaign. Um, it's very important at this historical time in our history that we attempt to leverage the power that we have amassed over the last 70 years of voting primarily Democrat to get some substantial gains. And, and in doing so, uh, we cannot let either party know in any way that we're going to vote for for anyone until we get those demands actually met, and we have to identify those demands. But the, the, I was asked to speak on the betrayal of the Democratic Party, and right now we're twenty percent of the Democratic Party's base. Um, white voters are sixty-one percent of the Democratic Party. Blacks are twenty percent of the Democratic Party. And all other people of color combined is 19% of the Democratic Party's voters base, those who come out for presidential elections. So we have ensured Democratic Party victories since 1960. Since 1952, the Republican Party has won the majority of the white vote in this country. 
72 straight years, and I, that's probably 16 presidential, 16, 18 presidential elections, they have won the majority of the white vote. If if the contest of ruling parties who controlled, which ruling party controlled this government was only among white voters, the Republican Party would have won, uh, Truman would have been the last Democratic uh, uh, president who was elected by a majority of white voters in this country. We gave this country Kennedy, which was the first break. Uh, Kennedy won 49% of the white vote. Nixon won 51% in that election. It was the 8% of black voters who made the difference, especially in states like Illinois and other states that made the difference for Kennedy. This country would not have pres a, a Kennedy as a president, would not have been you know, sent the man to the moon and all the other things that he supposedly had done. But one of the things he did do in you know, we understand white supremacy, but one of the things he did do uh, in, re in regards to attempting to uh, reach back to the black voters who got him there was he began um, to earnestly push desegregation in this country. For the second time since Reconstruction, he sent troop, federal troops into, uh, I think it was Arkansas, uh, Marshall, U.S. Marshals. Uh, to attempt to uh, desegregate the schools. He started uh, the process of the Civil Rights Bill. Uh, after he was assassinated, uh, Blacks fully went to a, in, in 1958 election, or 56 election, Blacks was still voting about 30% Republican. When Johnson was uh, ran after Kennedy's assassination, we were then 90%. We had totally, we were like totally Democrats at that particular time. And over the next 60 plus years, voting specifically Democrat has given us this particular base of 20% of the Democratic Party and the tremendous amount of power that should go with that numerical um, re, uh, facts. And so Kennedy attempted to bring some type of parity, move this country toward parity, desegregation, really push for desegregation. And then Johnson, you know, assigned the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act into law. Uh, all of those have supposedly ended apartheid in this country, legal apartheid in this country. So there was some, in addition to all the white supremacist actions and parasitic capitalism that was in place, there was an attempt by the Democratic Party to bring this country more into a, a state of, of, of equality, if you will, they, they, it, it still hasn't happened. They didn't do it. It still didn't happen. But that was an attempt to repay blacks for their vote, for putting them in office. And um, the next Democratic president, again, Carter, lost the majority of the white vote in this country. It was the black vote that put him in office as well. And you know, Carter signed into law affirmative action, which just recently was overturned. And, and we know what affirmative action, how it got black folks into corporate spaces, got black folks into colleges, you know, into uh, the, the uh, public sector. Uh, and so it had, a, it had, a, it had a, a big impact on uh, black life uh, when it was, when it was before, it had been, before it was shifted to white women and others. Uh, it was intentionally, originally intended for black people and it began to have a surge in the upward mobility of blacks. Then we got, um, President Clinton. Clinton lost the white vote bad. Uh, Ross Perot was a candidate also, and he took some of the white vote. But again, it was the black vote. And, and, and Clinton's election was the first time the Hispanic and Asian vote had any high numbers. I think it was about 6% of the vote. And the Asians was about 2%. Blacks was 12 or 13%. But prior to Clinton, it was primarily black, white, and maybe 1% other. And it was the black white vote intentionally. So when you come to Clinton, you have a amount of Asian vote, amount of Hispanic vote, but that they Asians and Hispanic usually vote two to one. So they'll give two votes to a Democrat and one to a Republican. So it cancels out a vote. But you have blacks voting nine to one. So every 10 votes we vote, nine goes to a Democrat. So that's how the power of the black vote is 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 escalated within the Democratic Party because we're not canceling out any of our votes by voting uh, Republican or independent the way the Hispanic and, Latin, and uh, Asian uh, 
vote does. So Clinton gave us three strikes you out and, and a ton of, ton of symbolism. You know, uh, playing the, you know, he played, went on Arsenio and played the, the saxophone, like, you know, now he's black. But, you know, we got the three, three strikes you out. He had an opportunity with his race commission to do something he didn't do. Uh, it was a commission that did nothing. <laughs> so, you know, that was the beginning of, you know, blacks had had 12 years of Republicans in this country, uh, had Reagan for, for, for eight years and, and Bush won for four years. And, and I guess black leaders were so happy that they were now back in the house that they didn't accept, they didn't, they didn't push for anything in, in a relation to the power that we had to put Clinton into office twice. We move forward to Obama in 19, um, in 2000, um, nine, he was elected in 2008. In 2009, uh, uh, Congressman John Conyers called an organization that I was with at the time in Cobra up to Detroit. Uh, he wanted to push his reparations bill. He was, he was all giddy and happy. He was the chair of the, of the Judicial Committee, a powerful committee in Congress. We had control of the Senate and the presidency. So he was happy. He was going to push reparations. He was going to get it passed. Within six months, he was told to, 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 to stand down. And for the next six years during the Obama administration, there was no talk of reparations. Fast forward to Biden. Uh, we put Biden in the office. And he came out at, on, on the election day and said, you know, y'all have my back. I'm going to have your back. He understood. And we've been saying since Obama that how powerful the black vote was, but no one was listening to us. Because, you know, if you know you have power, you're going to exercise that power. You, you're not just walk away from your power, especially if you're in a, in a situation of, of hurt or harm or injury. And you know you have power to push people to do what you want. You're going to, you're going to utilize it. You're going to attempt to utilize it. And what we've done in this country over the last <laughs> 30 years, uh, actually since 78, 80, since 78, we we're doing the Carter administration. Uh, so uh, he and his administration in 82. So for the last 40 years, we have not pushed the Democratic Party to do anything significant for us in regards to the power that we possess, in regards to what we do for the party. If we are able, if we are the ones who, you cannot win presidency as a Democrat without the black vote. You just can't in this country. It's numerically impossible for them to win <clears throat> without the black vote. And and if they and if they know it, and which they and they do, and the Republicans know it because they know that the black voters kept them out of office so in the sixteen eight presidential elections that they didn't win since nineteen fifty two. Too, they spent nine hundred million dollars in the last election crafted 900 pieces of legislation, the Republicans, to suppress the black vote. There was a new study that came out a couple of weeks ago that says over several million black, several million voters have been taken off the rolls as a result of all these, these things that the Republicans done in the last several years. So they know who is stopping them from power. And the Democratic Party know who is who, delivering them power, and yet they're not Given us what we deserve, as as what we, we're demanding as a result of that, so we're in a situation now where we're saying we have this power. You know we have this power. We know you. We know you want the presidency. All the theft and wars and everything that you can do once you're there, somebody's going to do it. But if you want to do it, because that's the nature of white supremacy. And at the same time, you know, we utilize our votes, our, we utilize our political astuteness to interfere in those efforts. But we know that some ruling party is going to rule this, this nation called America as long as it's in existence. And if we are the central black voters, it's a central vote for, to determine which of those two parties rule then we should get something in that, out of that, <laughs> again, that's measurable to begin to 
create a situation in this country where black people can actualize all of our talents and gifts and skills and et cetera for our own good, for our own purpose in a manner that is self-determining for us. And so the, the key going into this election is to be clear on our demands and to be clear that we are not committed to either party until we get those demands addressed before the election. Now, I have we, we have been pushing the campaign, earn the black vote, the saying that demand is a reparations commission before the election. Now, the Democratic Party, the president can do that tomorrow by executive order. But the Republican Party can do it tomorrow also, not with Trump, because he's not, he doesn't have any power. He's not in office. But the Republicans control the House. Mike Johnson can call H.R. 40 to the floor tomorrow, which is never going to happen, but he can do it. He has the power to do that. So we're saying to either party that this is a central demand before the election if you want the black vote. We can add other demands as we are doing here, but until that time of, the, of, of them sitting down and negotiating or acting, we must proclaim that we're uncommitted. Our vote is extremely powerful to the ruling parties of this nation. We cannot allow them to just take it for, and, and you know just roll with it and we get nothing from it. Uh, thank you. Uhuru, wow. Thank you uh, so much, Brother Cam. I just, I actually wanted to see if you could repeat like some of the statistics that you said right at the beginning. I just didn't grab my pen quick enough. You could put it in the chat, but I remember you said like 16% of, can you just repeat that? And then I just wanted to appreciate that presentation. Sure, 61% uh, of the Democratic Party's base, 61% is white voters, 20% is black voters, and 19% are all other people of color. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, and you've given this variations of these presentations and some even more in depth and have just been very, um, you know, revealing around this whole fear around, um, around you know, around electing, you know, rep like Republicans and, and so then, you know, telling black, you know, just pushing the black vote towards the, you know, the, you know, democratic vote, which has done nothing for, you know, our people. And, and again, like you have stated, who refuse to even speak to the issues that directly impact the African community and, you know, other oppressed peoples. And it's why it's so important to, you know, be able to fight against this, you know, tactic that tries to control, you know, how, you know, you know, how we vote. And also something that, is clear that the chairman has said, and even, you know, as you have stated as well, is, you know, that this, um, that these elections are nothing but a nonviolent, you know, contest between, you know, sectors of the ruling class. And, and it always, you know, ends up and, you know, and results in the, you know, in the destruction and the oppression of the people. And so this is a, this is an opportunity for us to, you know, recognize, you know, our voting power and to also recognize that, you know, um, you know, the people have a, you know, the, the people have a stake in this, um, in, you know, in these primaries, in these elections, and we have to get our issues on the ballot. And uh, so I just really wanted to appreciate that. And I don't know, Penny, if you wanted to add anything in addition, and I hope Brother Cam, you'll stay on with us for the question and answer portion, because I'm sure there will be questions about that as well, but just really wanted to salute that uh, presentation, comrade. Uhuru. Uhuru, uhuru. Thank you, Chairman Wazey. And yes, I, I wanna join in saluting that powerful presentation with just really important information that everybody must know in terms of the reality of the so-called right to vote in this country. And next, it is my honor to bring up Chimarenga Waller, who is the coordinator of the Make Our Votes Count uh, initiative and uh, Black is Back and that the Hands Off of Guru is, uh, is supporting. So uh, it's my honor to bring you up and to hear about this powerful campaign, Uhuru. Uhuru, thank you, Penny. And I want to really express appreciation to Chair Mwezi Odom of the Hands Off of Horror, Hands Off Africa uh, fight back. And all, all the attendees, <clears throat> Chairman O'Malley, Shetella, Deputy Chair, uh, 
on the Zanae and Shitella. I think what we have in the um, in the person, so to speak, of a of a uncommitted voter campaign. Uh, I, I would just like to give some background. Uh, the chairman uh, O'Malley Shitella called me, and he he was thinking very deeply about this uncommitted voter project that had been carried out in Michigan and a couple of other states, Minnesota, Colorado. And he told me how powerful he thought that that was and how powerful a uncommitted voter campaign could be that pushed African black issues onto the agenda, onto the political agenda of the Democratic Party. Uh, mostly Palestinians had organized 11 other organizations in Michigan. They formed this group called Listen to Michigan. They had a goal of getting 10,000 voters to vote uncommitted in the Michigan Democratic presidential primary. And uh, this was done in very short order, by the way. Uh, they did make, uh, they made, 500 and some thousand text messages, uh, 500 and some thousand phone calls. They, they made contact with more than a million, 100,000 voters. And it went way beyond their expectations about people voting uncommitted. Uh, they underestimated the discontent uh, with this U U.S. government and the policies of the U.S. government. And they ended up with 110,000 uncommitted voters and a couple of delegates to the Democratic National Convention, which I'm sure they weren't counting on before they carried out this campaign. But it had such a powerful impact, uh, it even pushed the, the Biden administration to slightly change their tune on Palestine, because that was the demand being made by listening to, to Michigan to end the Palestinian genocide against the, the Israeli genocide against the Palestinian uh, people in Gaza. So I think um, I was convinced after the chairman explained this to me, I had been kind of following it, but uh, he explained the impact that forcing black issues onto the table, issues such as dropping the charges against the Uhuru three the chairman included in that who are three and uh, the vice chair of this who or hands off who Penny Hess and Jesse Neville, who was an important solidarity force, uh, free Leonard Peltier and all political prisoners, reparations to the African community, a longstanding demand uh, that the African community has been making. Uh, in the genocide against the Palestinian people and stop funding the settler colonial uh, state of Israel, in mass incarceration of the African community, in gentrification that's pushing Africans and other colonized people out of our communities. That's the kind of agenda and platform that we want to push through an uncommitted voter campaign. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, they've already wrapped up uh, both nominations, Trump and Biden. Yes, we know that. However, it's still an election to come. That election is going to be the general election between Biden and, and Trump. And of course, there are a couple of third party candidates out there as well. So we want to make sure that these issues that we want to put on the table, African issues, black community issues, get put in the agenda. There are several more uh, primaries, Democratic presidential primaries, yet to go. Although they've they've uh, wrapped up those nominations, there's several more uh, primaries to go, including Illinois, uh, Ohio, uh, California. <clears throat> so there's millions of votes out there that could be voting for reparations for Black people, voting to to drop the charges against the who are three which is a direct demand of this hands off of who will fight back coalition. So I hope everyone can see the advantage of having, and, and we see the, the vehicle for this would be a political action committee 
uh, that is being formed by the, the Black uh, is Back Coalition that would be making this campaign happen. And um, I really want to salute Cam Howard. Uh, Cam gave the perfect uh, segue into the discussion about uncommitted voters because he's, he's talking about how, uh, you know, we must push forward the demand for reparations. Uh, every four years, Black community gives their votes to the Democrats, not based on our interests, but based on our fears that some Republican is going to get elected. And that's what the Democratic Party pushes. Stop the MAGA Republicans. Stop the Trump Republicans. And we say we have no obligation to do any of that kind of voting our fears. But our obligation is to devote our, to vote our interest. And voting uncommitted, even if they don't have uncommitted on the ballot in some of the states that I just mentioned, we should tell people to write it in. That's what we're going to be telling people in this campaign. And uh, the Hands Off of Hoover Fight Back Coalition can have a big role in this. We, we need resources, and uh, we haven't gotten the money receiving kind of uh, system set up yet, but we're going to need resources. We're going to need people to participate in this. And the Black is Back Coalition is, is really gung-ho about making this thing happen because we know we can bring millions of people into the orbit of the organizations of the Black is Back Coalition and really give agency uh, to the African people and also stop the domination of the Black middle class over electoral politics in the African community. So it's, it's a big uh, task, but uh, we got big ideas about how we're going to carry this task out and meet these objectives. So I really want to uh, thank Chairman Wazy uh, and Chairman O'Malley, if you should tell her, for, for giving me the inspiration to, to really take this on. And uh, I look forward to uh, many, many days coming up to, to get in these primaries and get people to vote uncommitted to put the black issues onto the table. Uhuru. 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 Um, Chair Chimarenga, just want to really appreciate you for that presentation. And again, this is um you just heard from the chair of this, you know, make our vote count, um, make our vote count campaign, laying out, you know, the groundwork for for what it's gonna take. You know, there's you know, logistics and other things that have to be pulled together, but I really want to appreciate that uh presentation. And again, just all of these various, you know, struggles, you know, gentrification and, you know, um, all the ways in which the African communities have been, you know, and all communities have been pushed out, um, you know, because of, you know, again, not, you know, uh, you know, representatives in office who, you know, who do not feel that that they even have to even, you know, care about our issues, but then later on, you know, even face them, you know, this is what, which is what we're trying to do through this process. So just want to appreciate you, comrade, for that presentation. And I know you will also stay on, because um, again, there will be some questions, but we do have people tuned in from, um, I just want to, you know, even name just a few of the places that I'm seeing, like New Jersey, Lexington, San Diego, um, uh, Tampa, Florida, uh, Philadelphia, uh, St. Louis, and uh, a few other places. Also, comrades who are tuning in from the continent of Africa, in West Africa, um, in Sierra Leone. And so this is, you know, this is something that we have to continue to, you know, put out to the people. And I just really want to say that the people are watching, the people are listening, and we're going to blow this thing up, you know, in defense of the um, Palestinian people for this initiative and African and all colonized peoples as well. So thank you, comrade, uh, so much. And um, before we transition to our next uh, presentation, which we're going to be hearing an analysis from the chairman, I do want to just remind everybody, um, you know, once more, again, we are raising resources for the Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition. You can do that by going to handsoffuhuru.org slash donate. Um, when you go to that page, it's going to look a little different, and we're going to talk about why it looks different, because, again, the attacks are relentless against the African liberation struggle and against this, this, this campaign to defend our leaders. But 
um, when you go to that page, you uh, you can make a pledge for how much you want to donate, and we'll talk more about that. But go to handsoffuhuru.org slash donate. We are relentless comrades, and we are going to raise our um, our goal of $500 on today. And if you have already made a donation and, and you've already went there, thank you. And we're going to make sure that we appreciate you um, in a moment. And um, we are developing a database um, for organizations and individuals who are comrade more like. <laughs> I just saw you come on for a second. These are our comrades, you know, who are on the continent, you know, who are a part of this fight back as well. And who won't be, you know, most likely won't be at the trial. But those of you who can make it to the trial on September 3rd uh, this year, we really want to know that right now, if you can, let us know in the chat that I will be there and we will follow up with you. If you could put your name and your email in the chat, if you want to put it in a private message to myself um, or to Chairwoman Penny, um, please do that in the chat right now. Let us know that you want to be there in September so that we can continue to, to um, organize. We're building a database and we need your name and your email. And if you are listening online and you can't give your information, you can email us at info at handsoffuhuru.org info at handsoffuhuru.org or sign up to volunteer to be a part of the committee to build for this trial. So again, donate and come to the trial, handsoffuhuru.org slash donate and email us at info at handsoffuhuru.org. So um, I want to write on, and I see um, already in the chat here, we have comrades who are saying that they will be there. Len, we're going to see you there. City, we're going to see you there. Leah, we'll see you there. Lauren, we'll see you there. And I know it's just rolling in. So these are comrades from all over the United States. Uhuru Kitty, we're going to see you also in September. And, um, you know, the list goes on, comrades. And so please, um, you know, let it be known. And we hope to see everybody there. So right on. Thank you, Franklin. And Franklin is on the ground in Tampa. So, you know, this these are the kind of forces that we need who can, you know, help us resolve all the logistical things that we're going to see and, you know, have to, uh, you know, figure out and resolve. So this is very great, comrades. Keep it coming. Let us know that you will be there. And I also want to salute uh, someone else who is on the call, Sister Lisa Davis, who is the vice chair of the uh, Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and, and Reparations, who is another relentless leader on this front. Um, you know, on all the fronts that the Black is Back is taking on as well. So thank you, comrade. So without further ado, um, I'm going to uh, take a moment to introduce Chairman Amalia Shetela, uh, you know, who is the chairperson of the African People's Socialist Party and the leader of the of the Uhuru movement, who was the target on the July 29th um, attacks. And and who will be who we see free as we drop the charges against the Uhuru three on, um, you know, before we even get to the trial. So I really want to salute Chairman, who's for over 50 years of leadership um, has been, you know, putting the colonial question out, you know, unapologetically and has been leading this struggle. And Chairman, to hear your analysis as we, you know, bring up and how we discuss this idea or what it means to be an uncommitted voter in the context of overturning colonialism and the colonial mode of production. We look forward to um, hearing from you on today. So Uhuru Chairman. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uh, let's see. You don't need to. You don't need to do anything. Uhuru Comrade, um, I want to express appreciation to you um, and to uh, the Hands Off Uhuru Committee and all of the people who are participating in this meeting. And I especially uh, want to offer appreciation to comrades uh, Cam Howard and Chimaringa Slimbayo, uh, who were able to give a lot of insight into the significance of the African vote that goes unrecognized and uh, uh, not dealt with effectively. And where in our community, the African community here, uh, throughout this country, uh, we have uh, a sector of uh, the African population that mon monopolizes the electoral process to, uh, to the detriment of the vast majority of African people. I think it's important for us to repeat what someone, I uh, think it was Comrade Mwazi mentioned early on. Uh, let's not have any illusions about elections and the electoral process. <laughs> I think it's important to repeat that elections in this country are simply, generally speaking, nonviolent contests between sectors of the ruling colonial powers for control of the state. The state being that entity, that bureaucracy, that entity uh, that also uh, is the military, the police, the court system, uh, 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 the prison system, et cetera, and, and the CIA, uh, 
All of those forces represent uh, the state. And this contest that happens uh, in this country that's called elections, call themselves Democrat, Republicans, whatever, uh, but they are the leading uh, institutions, organizations of the ruling class, the colonial ruling class in this country. And they have never put freedom on the ballot. Uh, they have never put liberation on the ballot. In fact, they, they are entities uh, who vie for, who compete uh, with each other uh, for the capacity uh, to maintain the oppression of the people in a way that's uh, uh, most uh, beneficial and profitable, profitable uh, to each of them. Uh, so we should have no illusions. And the thing is that uh, we should also remember uh, that African people are not supposed to be voting in this country. Uh, when uh, the electoral process uh, was initiated in this country, when people even start talking about voting in this country, African people were considered three-fifths of a human being for the purpose of seeing which white group will be able to have advantage of our presence in this country uh, in a fashion that would provide greater power uh, to them in the electoral process. That, that's the thing that we should always be clear of because sometimes that gets lost uh, from our memory and from our vision. So uh, I participated uh, in a struggle in this country uh, as did many thousands and millions of African people uh, for African people having uh, the right to participate in the electoral process. I was one of those uh, uh, people die. And I think it's important to say this because the United States government wants to put me in prison uh, precisely uh, because uh, in part because of the activity that I was involved in or initiated around the whole electoral process. This was an, an activity that challenged the status quo, challenged how African people were supposed to participate now that we had fought and forced our way onto the agenda, making it necessary to be included uh, in the electoral process. But this was not something that was done just because of us, not just because African children were being bombed in churches or killed in church, church bombings or because African children uh, were facing high-powered uh, water hoses just for demonstrating for the right to join Joe Biden's party. Uh, the fact is at the same time, some, something similar to what is happening now, the United States was also involved in a huge contest with Soviet Russia, the Soviet Union, uh, uh, for uh, determining uh, in, in an international scale, which was the best uh, uh, kind of system for the majority of the peoples. And the majority of the people were not white people in America. They scattered around the world. And this contest was going on between what was called Soviet Russia or Russia uh, and the United States. And when, when the world could see African children being bombed, African leaders being assassinated and things like this, uh, it was, it was uh, ideological and, and, and political uh, uh, fodder uh, for uh, the Soviet Union and any other force that wanted to show uh, this is what American democracy looks like. And so it made it necessary. Uh, and there was one of the things that pushed the United States to have to offer uh, the right to participate in the electoral arena. Remember, uh, King uh, was died, was killed. Uh, uh, churches were bombed. Uh, uh, people like Fannie Lou Hamer thrust into uh, prominence. Uh, people like Ella Baker uh, her renown uh, was initiated through this process, but it was the electoral process that did this. And the United States government uh, uh, was forced uh, to pay attention now to the African people to open the door to the electoral process. So in 1964, uh, to show just how genuine this democracy is in this country to the world, and in this contest uh, with the Soviet Union and with communism, uh, the United States passed in 1964 a civil rights bill. In 1965, uh, they were forced us uh, to, to uh, put in, on the ground a Voting Rights Act that was supposed to provide universal suffrage. Uh, everybody could vote now, they said. But the same year that they put forth this uh, Voting Rights Act, they killed Malcolm X. Uh, and Malcolm X was one who was advocating the Black Nationalist Program. Uh, anti-colonial program, uh, where he was declaring that it was necessary for Black people. He had, he had said it's the ballot or the bullet, either that we will be able to get free using the ballot, open the door, use the ballot or the bullet. It was going to take armed struggle. Malcolm was saying that. 
And Malcolm put forth uh, what he characterized, he broke from the nation of Islam. He put forth that at that point, did not participate in elections, but Malcolm was probably contending with King as the most significantly recognized black leader in this country. And so, uh, and much of the world for that matter. And so uh, uh, Malcolm put forth uh, what he called a philosophy of black nationalism. And he talked about how this philosophy uh, would promote this agenda uh, uh, for black people in the electoral arena. For This is Malcolm entering the electoral arena. He was meeting with Fannie Lou Hamer. He was having uh, meetings uh, with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee that would put that I was a member of that he would that would put the black power demand out on on the in the world, and so uh, Malcolm had a program that African people he said would be able to, would necessarily necessarily control the politics of our community, the politicians in our community, that we control the economy of our communities. It's something like Black Power Blueprint that you will see right here in St. Louis in the programs that we've been advancing all along. Malcolm had a program. Then Martin Luther King had moved beyond uh, uh, simply talking about and winning, trying to win Johnson and the Democratic Party. He initiated what he called a Poor People's Campaign. He was working on that, and the objective was to go into Washington, D.C., even borrowing some of the tactics of direct action that came from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, saying that we would go into Washington, D.C., we would shut it down, do all kinds of things to force the United States to put forth a program that responded to the needs and aspirations of poor people in this country, and that it would be something that was designed to push uh, a restructuring, economic and political restructuring in this country. So Malcolm X, they, the Civil Rights Bill, uh, the vote in 1964, the Voting Rights Act in 1965, uh, Malcolm X, his program, he gets assassinated in 1965. Uh, Martin Luther King already shifting away uh, from the trajectory that he had been on for the longest period of time. That's why people talk about this speech he made in 1967, on April 4th, a, a, a year to the day uh, of his, before his assassination, that happened on April 4th, 1968. And he's putting forth this program, organizing African people, regardless of this party thing, to go in and disrupt to get what it is that we needed. And then, of course, as we know, the war that was being made against the Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Movement overall, because this is a movement that Malcolm X represented, SNCC represented. Uh, we see increasingly Black Panther Party represented. This is an anti-colonial struggle. It was a struggle that, uh, uh, from the perspective ideologically from SNCC, ideologically that was coming from the Black Panther Party uh, that said we have to struggle uh, against colonialism. They were, they were believing this whole issue of racism and by, into the wayside. And even though ideologically, philosophically, King was not talking about uh, struggle here against colonialism, he was united with the struggle against colonialism, united with Vietnam. He was in Africa at the time, Kwame Nkrumah in Africa uh, 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 went, uh, initiated the independence uh, for, uh, for, 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 for Africa, for Ghana and Africa, et cetera. So it was a whole massive anti-colonial thing that had grasped the people in this country, that had grasped uh, that people around the world were fighting against. This was the program. But then they say, OK, now you, you, they kill everybody, they jail everybody, and then say, now you can vote. But the only thing you got to vote for is the Democratic Party, because you, we don't have our own independent program coming from Malcolm. We don't have our independent program, poor, poor people's program, speaking to the interests of black people. Uh, we don't have the Black Panther Party 10-point program. We don't have the program that's coming from other revolutionary organizations against colonialism. The only thing was there was the Democratic Party. And so they shot and clubbed and burned and bombed uh, us into the Democratic Party out of our own organization. That's what we've been stuck with all this time since then. So now the African People's Socialist Party initiates the Black Black Coalition. It is now comprised of 17 different organizations. And the objective of the Black Black Coalition was to return the movement of Black people to a struggle for self-determination against colonialism. Uh, and, and it put forth a 19-point uh, national Black political agenda for Black people that, that, that dealt with the questions against colonialism and self-determination. It talked to about reparations. It talked about Palestine. It talked about uh, all the colonized people around the world and what America was doing to them. And we even initiated the process of training ordinary Black people from the, from the school campuses, from the housing projects, from all the communities, et cetera, uh, to put, participate in the electoral process. Now, going back 
to the electoral process using the program uh, from Malcolm, using the program from King, using the program from the Black Panther Party that they had shut out of existence. So it was a revolutionary anti-colonial project uh, that we were able to pull back together again. And that's why it's so important uh, to put forth this uncommitted vote. Uh, because what has to happen, and, and because I've heard that some people question well, why you want to do this, that they can see the Palestinian question, they can't see this. And they can't see it because they, they are in this, this place uh, that has been prompted and promoted since we've been in this country of denying agency to Black people. And the fact is, we have agency, we have a program, and we want you to support our program. We support the Palestinian, we supported the Palestinian movement before white people in this country left the otherwise did. Malcolm was there. Uh, and, Ma and King was actually in Palestine, although he didn't come to the same conclusion that Malcolm X did. Uh, uh, we've always supported the, the struggle of the Palestinian people. So we support that. We support the struggles against colonialism. Uh, but there's nothing that's on the Democratic Party uh, uh, agenda platform. Any of these guys who are running for office that speaks directly to the interests of African people specifically, even though they're robbing our vote, et cetera, because they've got these, puppete these puppets uh, who will vote just as they want them to vote because there's a massive industry associated with containing the African vote, um, maintaining the African vote, keeping uh, different of these people in power over poverty programs and things like this, while the rest of us want to be free and want to have the ability uh, to feed, clothe, and house ourselves. And so this is what it is that we're looking at. So we say, we say let's do this. What, where is the Democratic Party program around Africa? What do they say about what they're doing to our people in places like Nigeria? They're arming and trying to find a way to go to Nigeria. They've, they've done put sanctions on Zimbabwe simply because in Zimbabwe, the people took back the land that the white people stole with Cesar Rose and et cetera, using Maxim machine guns where they kill thousands of people at lunchtime and then have tea afterwards mm -hmm. and give that land away. That was what you call, we'll talk about gentrification. And then look at what they've done and continue to do to the indigenous people here. Talking about Mexicans, uh, talking about uh, Diné, talking about uh, 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 Lakota and all of the other indigenous people whose land that we, are, we exist on. And, and these are issues that, that are swept under the rug. There's no discussion. So they got Leonard Peltier, an indigenous man, locked up for, in prison for 40 some odd years, going on 50 years. They would put me in prison because I would utilize the electoral process. They would put me in prison because I'm opposed to them using my reparations money uh, uh, against the people in Palestine, against the people in Ukraine, in, in Russia, through Ukraine, et cetera. So we uh, have to put forth our own agenda and we are calling on everybody to unite with African people in this, this agenda that we're talking about. And this agenda will be what has to be there, uh, discussed, fought around, et cetera. And that's what the uncommitted vote would do. We're saying that we unite Black people in this country, unite uh, with the struggle of the Palestinian people. We unite uh, that the U.S. should stop uh, bombing and paying for the murder uh, uh, through this white nationalist uh, uh, entity that calls itself Israel. Uh, you, we unite with it, with stopping that, but we go a step beyond that. We say, don't do that. The, the billions of dollars that you're sending to kill uh, uh, Palestinian babies and women uh, and others uh, should be put into uh, an account uh, going to black people for overdue reparations that you owe us. Uh, and so uh, stop the gentrification. Which, which one of the candidates that you see saying stop gentrification? How is it they're destroying Washington, the black population, Washington, D.C. being pushed out, Harlem being pushed out, uh, St. Louis, Missouri being pushed out? Every place we look, we see this offensive that's being made uh, of, 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 of displacement of the African population inside this country. And then, of course, the horrible things that we mentioned uh, that the, this country is doing internationally. So we say that this this uh, uh, vote that the this campaign that we're initiating, where we'll go door to door, do the regular campaign kind of stuff that we should do, and we will put the issues and interests of African people uh, on the agenda through this process, and we'll be calling on everybody else who claims to be a friend of African people to unite uh, with this uh, uh, this this process. We uh, 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 of what is characterized as uh, un un. Uh, uh, the uncommitted uh, uh, vote. 
uh, and it's uncommitted uh, because of uh, it has to address the issues of African people implied by Comrade Cam How Howard, implied uh, by uh, Comrade uh, Chimaringa. And we want everybody to join with this and wherever you are located, join with this uh, and to the extent possible, come on to this campaign, the structures that are being put in place by Comrade Chimaringa. Uhuru, Africa. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, Chairman. That's such a powerful overview. Um, that that's actually just very helpful, Chairman. And I think I hope I, you know, I was taking some notes and I hope others were too. And that itself is, you know, just a really excellent overview for, you know, in, in terms of the long term goals, like we want to be free. We want a system in where in which we are free and all, you know, colonized people have the right to, you know, be able to um, have self-determination and not have to vote for anybody to to see things change in their community. But in the process of that, we take all of this, you know, under this, um, you know, under this current struggle right now with this vote uncommitted campaign. And whether, like you said, Chairman, gentrification, you know, we understand that's colonialism, the attack on Palestine, that's colonialism, drop, you know, um, you know, political prisoners, all of that. But 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 right now, whether you know we even understand what that means or not, this is an opportunity. Um like you said, Chairman, for us to be able to um, do something that, again, is always illegal because, like you said, we were not supposed to vote, and 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 we're clear on that. But here we are, you know, putting our our, our issues on the ballot, and I just want to, um, or you know, you know, in this in this electoral you know arena, to be able to to continue to contend with this state, which is you know unrelenting in its efforts to crush the people and you know silence the people and crush our right to even freedom of speech, even the right to say this. And so um, just really wanna salute that presentation chairman. And I know there are some questions that have been coming in and a lot of um, just you know unity with the struggle and, and also people who wanna um, be there to vote. And there is an email address I just wanna put out, make our votes count at yahoo.com. Um, if you have questions and you want to join this campaign, make our votes with an S count at yahoo.com is being put in the chat and we'll make sure that that information also gets put out on other platforms as well. Thank you, comrades. And um, there's also an initiative that that you can read that has been developed by Chimarenga that will also give more information as well. And of course, you know, uh, you know, all of this under the you know chairman's political leadership, which really helped to frame it um, in the way that we need to see it. So thank you, chairman. And um, we understand that today's meeting is a daytime meeting and many people are at work and popping in during their lunch break. So we do want to be mindful of that. And we are, um, you know, in the efforts of trying to keep on time, I'm gonna bring up our next speaker. And this is uh, Comrade Jesse Neville, who is the chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, um, a leader on the <laughs> solidarity front of the African liberation struggle, leading the mass work. And uh, Jesse is also one of the Uhuru Three. And again, we want these comrades not to set a foot in prison, even in that courtroom. And so I, I really wanna salute you comrade and appreciate you being on this call. And you're here to give us an update on the, the you know latest attack with the fiscal sponsor and also to also probably give us an update on our goal to raise 500 today in pledges uh, towards the hands off Uhuru legal fund. So Uhuru, uh, Jesse. Uhuru, Uhuru Chair Mwazi, Uhuru, it's an honor to be here, and this has been a very powerful meeting. I just want to start off by expressing my absolute unity and solidarity with this campaign, Make Our Votes Count campaign, to put the agenda of the African community on the ballot and to vote uncommitted in, in the primaries that are coming up. And I want to express appreciation for this powerful meeting and for the presentation by Chairman Omalia Shatella, the analysis and leadership on this powerful campaign and also Director Chimaranga, uh, Comrade Cam Howard and uh, Chairwoman Penny and yourself, uh, Chair Mwazi. And yes, as you mentioned, I am I am speaking uh, very briefly right now on behalf of the Hands Off Uhuru Fundraising Committee. First of all, to say that this has been an absolutely incredible and victorious fundraising campaign over the last year and a half, which thousands of people have contributed to and which has raised almost the entirety of the phase one goal that was that was established to raise the funds for legal representation and other costs of the defense, the counteroffensive campaign after the raids on July 29th, $271,831 hmm. has been raised since uh, July 29th. 
And there's actually some other pledges that are coming in. So we are just about $5,000 away from completing phase one. And we had a goal to bring in another $500 in pledges today, but I'd like to say, let's go ahead and bring in the $5,000. Let's get this done, this phase one goal. And unfortunately, you cannot actually make your donation today, but you can make a pledge by going to handsoffaproof.org slash donate. I'm going to explain the reason for that in just a moment. But first, I want to thank the comrades who have already gone to handsoffaproof.org slash donate and put in their pledges, which includes Leah, who put in $100 pledge, uh, Leertis, who put in $20, John, who put in $20, Franklin, who put in $40, and MQ, one of our top donors who put in a pledge of $200. Whoa. So want to salute all of those wow. comrades, Uhuru. Oh. And I also put in $100 uh, pledge. So we are at 480 out of our goal of 500 pledged for today. So I want to encourage people to continue going to handsoffuhuru.org slash donate. And I want to say a few words quickly about why uh, the donations have been put on pause and we have to now switch to taking pledges, which we will follow up with you once we are able to accept donations again. We will follow up with everybody who made their pledge so that you can go ahead and put in those resources. But as people may have seen from the notice that was sent out a few days ago, um, about a week and a half ago, the Hands Off Uhuru campaign received the very surprising, unexpected notification from the Open Collective Foundation, which has been our fiscal sponsor up to this point, that their uh, organization is dissolving in its entirety, and that after March 15th, we would not be able to accept donations on that platform any longer. And everyone who has been a monthly sustainer your sustainer funds have been paused as of the 15th. And as soon as we establish a new fiscal sponsor, we will let people know how you can reinstate your sustainer. Open Collective Foundation did not provide any explanation for why they were shutting down. Um, but of course, it's absurd to assume that like the burning of the church across the street from the chairman's house, like the torching of the flag outside the uh, Uhuru House, July of 2022, like all of the bank accounts associated with the Uhuru movement have been shut down, that this is, like the chairman says, just another coincidence. And there have been uh, discussions amongst other organizations who, have, who were also fiscally sponsored by Open Collective, that it is essentially an open secret, if you will, that the Uhuru movement and the Hands Off Uhuru campaign were the primary targets of the Open Collective Foundation dissolving, and that this represents yet another effort by the US government to frustrate and undermine free speech and the ability of this campaign to go forward and the ability of all of you to exercise your free speech in supporting this campaign. And I think the fact that in going after Hands Off of Peru, uh, the this organization dissolved, essentially leaving over 600 other organizations also without fiscal sponsorship, is a perfect example of what the Hands Off Uhuru campaign has been saying from the beginning, that when you take away the right of freedom of speech from Chairman Omalia Shetela, from the Uhuru movement, from African people, you take away freedom of speech from everyone. So this is the situation that we are facing right now, and we are moving very rapidly um, to uh, get a new fiscal sponsor. And we are uh, we have some, some possibilities that are uh, that are, you know, in process right now. We are expecting within the next few weeks to be up and running with a new fiscal sponsor so that we can continue bringing in uh, donations towards this process. And I do want to appreciate Chairwoman Penny Hess. No, no Comrade Allison. Oh, Haney. Secretary General Allison Haney, who uh, pledges $50 towards our uh, goal today. And other people who are tuned in online, Lauren, who pledged $30, Stephanie, who pledged $20, Chair Mwazy, who pledged 20, so we have $550 pledged so far towards our goal today. And I'm going to pledge 25. And we have 25 pledged from Chairwoman Penny Hess. So I want to wrap this up by saying that uh, this, this uh, news about the fiscal sponsor uh, shutting, shutting its doors, if you will, came just not long after the, uh, the announcement of the trial was made, actually. It was just a few weeks after we learned of a tentative trial date. And it's happening in the context of escalating attacks 
on fundraising campaigns for anti-colonial struggle, such as in the raids and indictments of the Stop Cop City Bail Fund organizers who were indicted on bogus charges of money laundering and charity fraud, and the wide array of financial attacks that have been made and sanctions that have been made against the Uhuru movement and the African community. So the Hands Off Uhuru campaign and fundraising committee is resolute and determined to continue to fight for anti-colonial free speech, to continue to fight for the right of all of our supporters to fund this legal and political fight back. And we will be, as I said, uh, letting people know as soon as it is possible to continue donating how you can go ahead and do that and continue contributing towards our legal expenses, which will include testimony from expert witnesses and other crucial work to defeat the US government's attempts to imprison Chairman Omalia Shatella and the Uhuru Three. We will win, we are winning. And thank you so much to Chair Mwazi and to all of you who have contributed your pledges uh, up to this point. Continue to go to handsoffuhuru.org slash donate. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru comrade, thank you so much, uh, Chair Jesse, for that. Um, overview about these most recent attacks, as well as, um, you know, getting us through our appeal, which comrades, we we surpassed our pledge goal for today. And I also want to say, um, so we have raised total in pledges $625. So right. Um, yeah, so right on comrades, this, this is, um, you know, how we, you know, how we continue to fight back against the state. And I just really cannot say enough how much support or how much we appreciate all this support. And to say that, um, uh, yes, we will be following up. And if you want to volunteer again, you know, to be, you know, a part of this, you know, fundraising effort and, you know, all the various committees in the Hands Off Who Fight Back, we open our, our arms to you, comrades. So you can go to handsoffforhoover.org slash volunteer if you want to, um, you know, contribute your skills in that way. And again, every donation, um, you know, a dollar or 500 is more than appreciated and also, you know, your skills as well. So uh, there are some really, you know, important, uh, um, this is on Zoom, uh, comments that have been put in the chat that some, um, you know, some of our viewers and supporters have listed in terms of, you know, just information and, you know, historical, you know, references to the whole history of the struggle to vote. And I really want to appreciate uh, Franklin for your comments as well. And um, Penny, if you see me that, you know, we're able to read or, you know, pull up, please do. I did want to um, come back because I think we had a question from earlier. And this might be something that perhaps uh, Professor, uh, per, I was gonna say, Professor Chimarenga, <laughs> Chair Chimarenga, and you know um, other comrades on the call want to address. But um, Penny, should we go ahead and just read some of these questions as quickly as we can? Or yes, all right, okay, yes, let's read them right on. So one question that came in was from. Um, um, after we sent out the mass text message, we got a response from Nancy and Nancy asked, uh, do I write uncommitted on all, um, because that's how I feel. She, that's what, uh, Nancy says, or just on the presidential selection. So, um, the question is again, do I write uncommitted on all for, and I know, uh, comrade Chimarenga is like, and has a lot of experience in some of these technical terms too, so. Yeah. <laughs> Chairman, uh, Chairman O'Malley should tell us here as well. Yes. Oh, and I see Chairman's hand is up. So who Chairman, and then I see Indio Chimarenga has also come on the call. So um, please Go ahead, yeah, take this off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this campaign is about the presidential election, but we uh, and the and the primaries and getting uncommitted voters for these presidential Democratic Party presidential primaries. But beyond that, we don't know what it is. We, we believe the campaign can do a lot of things. Um, but yeah, we, we don't, uh, we're not suggesting that you vote uncommitted for, for every candidate uh, in the down ballot as well. Uh -huh. You might, you might want to do that, <laughs> depending on who it is. Yeah. Well, I think, I think you can do it. I think that everybody on the ballot of Democratic Party should know uh, that Biden is dragging them down, uh, that they're not they're not un uniting. Biden's not dealing with the reparation question, with the uh, dropping the charges, with gentrification, the mass imprisonment of African people, police murder, uh, all of these things that that's bringing them down too. 
So, you know, uh, go for Biden, of course, but I think that you can do that for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every, they would know that it's yeah. Biden. They're, yeah. they're on Biden's yes. coattails and they should know that those coattails are on fire. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and you know that uh, because some of the, what this raises to for me even, like in, I'm in California and I know that the primaries have already passed. And so some people have said, I saw a question somewhere that people have already voted here. And so, you know, I just wanted to say, and maybe there's something else that you can add uh, Chairman uh, Chimaringa and even uh, Brother Cam Howard around those who have already, you know, made their, made their vote. Um, what can they do? And, you know, obviously to continue to put this out there and, but if there's anything else you wanted to say around some of the primaries that have already passed and what, people can still do yeah I, I think it's a lot people can do one they can they can uh you know give give their own support and and volunteers for the uh make our votes count campaign in addition they can they can also call their relatives in the states where it's still primaries to go and say vote on committee call your friends call Call, call the, the person that, you know, rings you up at the grocery store. Uh, tell them to vote on committed uh, in their state. And uh, I have put in the a link in the agenda the actual uncommitted voter plan of action. And it has a list of all of the primaries that, that uh, uh, have not been completed yet. Okay. I'd like to add to that, if I may. Um, yes. Because I think that uh, what's happening here uh, is uh, that we are uh, establishing and promoting a more or less uh, national, a revolutionary national democratic program uh, for the liberation of African people. And that this will get spread beyond just the, this campaign, this election, uh, et cetera. Okay. What we are doing is providing uh, something that they shot out of, uh, out of uh, the political arena. You know, like uh, when they murdered Malcolm, he wasn't running for office, you know. Uh, and uh, so I think that it's 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 really important for everybody to be aware of this. And I would remind people also in 1972, uh, there was uh, 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 an action of a, a, a conference that was held in Gary, Indiana. A National Black uh, Political Convention was held in Gary, Indiana. And all kinds of lofty speeches were made and things that people were going to do, including uh, creating a black political party and black labor union and all those things. And that's what people were this promised they were going to do. They were enthused that 8,000 people attended that thing in Gary, Indiana. And <clears throat> light poles adorned with red, black, and green flags in the city. That was something that was Richard Hatcher, the first, uh, 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 one of the first black elected mayors that happened since the civil rights thing. Uh, but what happened was, uh, by the time they left there, the Democratic Party that many of them were members of, including Hatcher uh, uh, and some of the others, uh, told them they're out of their minds. And it made them retreat uh, from everything that they uh, had said they were going to do. So what we are doing is we are advancing a national Black political agenda that's not controlled by the Democratic Party. This is Black is Back Coalition that's working with a coalition more than 40 different organizations that uh, claim solidarity with the struggles of African people. Uh, uh, and our struggle go beyond election uh, uh, ballot. Uh, and in fact, we had to fight like hell even to get the right to vote. So, uh, and uh, our progress was made prior to uh, getting the vote. And uh, after having accomplished the thing of getting the vote, they neutralized the significance of us having the vote uh, by uh, destroying an organization and, and independent organization and programs that we might use for that. So this gives us uh, armed the masses of people uh, with an agenda, armed people who love Black people uh, with an opportunity to demonstrate that uh, with genuine solidarity uh, by, by uniting with the, this program that's coming from the Black is Black Coalition, uh, that's coming uh, from the Hands Off Uhuru uh, movement that has all kinds of forces, you know, participating in it. So, Uhuru. 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 Thank you for that, Chairman. And 
I know there's also a question here from Lisa Davis, who is saying one of the things that I think has happened is that the Black electorate has allowed our politics to be watered down so much. Black elected officials on the whole are so damned weak that they, mo that, that they most can't even call for a ceasefire. And in fact, the Black members of Congress were the ones who introduced the countering malign Russian activities in Africa in April 2022. Basically, they called for the US government to monitor and go after all Black people throughout the world who not, do not fall in line with what the US wanted. And then in July, the state attacked the Uhuru movement and they have said nothing. So chairman, it's a com a very strong comment and just wanted you to- Yeah, I think respond. that's right. And I think what, again, listen comrades, when, when the US government attacked our movement, uh, when they killed Malcolm, killed King, uh, uh, destroyed, uh, made this uh, horrible war against the Black Panther Party and, and SNCC members and things like that. What they did uh, was this was a part of a whole counterinsurgency. So they kicked the uh, revolutionaries, kicked people who were fighting for the interests of African people out of the political contest and raised up a sector of our population, like the ones that you're dealing with right there in New Jersey, uh, Comrade Sist uh, Sister uh, Lisa Davis and others who have been dispersed all around this country. Uh, and so this is the kind of leadership that they promoted, they created, they killed our leaders, uh, jailed our leaders, uh, chased our leaders into exile, and they raised up this other sector and they, they, they groomed them and put them forward uh, as representatives of black people. They had never represented black people. Even the, the, the one that black people came to adore and love so much because they had a left hand jump shot and and could imitate Al Green. Everything about him was imitation. And so uh, 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 they function as uh, a, a kind of sleight of hand. Uh, you get the impression that you got somebody, uh, but it's empty. There's nothing there for us. We have to have, we, we acquire an independent capacity and that's what this is offering us the opportunity to do. Somebody said, well, why don't you form your own political parties? That may be what we're in the process of doing. I don't know. I do know that we are consolidating. This is a part of a process of consolidating a revolutionary national black, uh, you know, uh, black, ag black agenda uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, forces who can unite, generally speaking, with this project. And on April 13th and 14th, the Black and Black Coalition will be having uh, an electoral campaign school uh, here in St. Louis. We want everybody who can to come here. We want people uh, to watch this thing because uh, we are re-entering. We are coming into uh, the electoral arena. We're not going to allow the people who were, were, were mentioned uh, by Comrade Lisa Davis uh, to continue to monopolize this arena because none of them fought for it. None of them were the ones who, well, you, we had some instances, some of them were there. They love those because those are the ones who, uh, with everything happening to us, are uh, incapable of taking us on an independent path. So anyway, uh, like I said, the Black Spike Coalition will be doing uh, a, a political, this will be the eighth uh, year uh, that we wow. put forth an electoral school where we teach people how to participate in the electoral process in a, a way, an independent, as an independent movement of African people. Uhuru. Uhuru Chairman, could, could you just say again where people can go to sign up for that? Because that has made a huge impact on this whole question of elections all over the place. It, you know, it, it really was um, a forefront for the whole question of reparations to be on the ballot. Yeah, and this is that's right. I mean, the first time a, a reparation on the ballot uh, in this country was uh, a consequence of uh, one of the candidates, uh, two, uh, one of the two of the candidates in St. Petersburg, Florida, who we've been indicted. You know, we've been indicted. Uh, uh, the, you know, they said the Russians did this. It was black people did this. The Black is Black Coalition right. did this. Uh, so go to uh, 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 blackisbackcoalition.org. Blackisbackcoalition.org, black black and you can learn uh, about uh, this school that's going to be happening mm -hmm. April. 13th and 14th. Actually, it's going to start on the 12th for people who can get here. Uh, come uh, to uh, St. Louis. If you get here on the 12th, we'll show you also the other evidence of independent 
a political and economic activity that's yeah. transformed an entire African community as another reason why they would be attacking us and killing us. And no, no Russian gave us the $160,000 that we used to create a basketball court uh, for African children who otherwise are playing in the streets with makeshift hoops that come from bicycle rims and stuff like that. No, they are attacking yeah. us because we represent negation of the colonial power over our lives. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you for that. And I did want to say that that Cam Howard also put in the in the chat that um, that anybody can participate and get more information on the reparations campaign that he heads up, and they can go to http earntheblackvote.net earn the black right. vote. Right. right. Thank you, comrade. I wanted to make sure that that got out. And even um, we have some um, chat moderators on YouTube and Facebook and. We'll make sure that we also get that out there as well. Um, very helpful. And I'm sure that there's also information that we've shared that will also, as Chimarenga said, let you know when the upcoming primaries are taking place so that we can be in place and mobilize um, you know, on the ground. So I just really want to appreciate the chairman's overview and, and, and response to that uh, comment by Sister Lisa. And we are, um, you know, for the sake of time, Carmads, unless there's anything else that I'm missing. Um, Penny, I, I know we do want to be mindful of the time and that we will have more to say about this at our upcoming webinars. And we're just going to give some announcements about when you can come back and, you know, you know, come back and see us. Uhuru. So if you see anything else, uh, comrade, let me know. I do want to actually, before I go any further, announce some of the upcoming, um, some more pledges that have come in as we are um, you know, building for our goals. So far we have total raised in pledges $745. So I wanna appreciate um, for your $50 pledge, Johan for your $25 pledge, Caesar, um, who was also a you know dynamic volunteer on the Hands Off of Who um, committee for your $20 uh, donation or uh, will pledge. And then also uh, comrade Raya for your $25 pledge as well. So. Salute comrades, we are, um, you know, we're gonna continue to build this illegal fund. And then Ruby uh, made a $20 pledge as well. So salute to you, Ruby. Uh, that takes us to uh, $765 raised in pledges for today's um, webinar. And if I missed you, let me know um, in the chat. So, who are... oh, go ahead, you were gonna say something, uh, Penny. No, this has been a powerful, powerful meeting today. I'm very excited about this campaign. And just to say, I'm in Missouri um, here with the chairman and Comrade Jesse and our um, presidential uh, primary is Saturday, Saturday the 23rd. But I know that Jim Arenga listed everyone that's still upcoming. So this is going to be a very important campaign to take on. It will be. And and I just want to say, you know, we have um, not, we're not able to read all the comments, but if you're on Zoom and, you know, Franklin put in some great information as well. And Franklin, you know, if you are interested in you know volunteering with this campaign, please reach out to uh, Comrade Chimarenga. It sounds like you have a lot of experience in this, too, and that would be great. And, and you know, everybody who has also contributed. I wanted to say that before we uh, closed out. So um, without further ado, um, if we can pull up the announcements and. Um, but uh, Chairman, if there are any closing remarks, I know you just made one really powerful um, in response to Sister Lisa's uh, comment overall, but if there's anything you'd like to say, Chairman, this would be a good time before we move to announcements. Uhuru. And as well as um, Comrades Chimarengo or Cam, I'd like to open it up. Yeah. I just want to say that despite uh, all of the terror and all the things that we just mentioned and them uh, pushing African people out of the electoral process. They offer the electoral process as evidence of democracy in this mm -hmm. country. And then they negate the significance of the electoral process by killing off our leaders and our programs and destroying our organizations. They did all of that. <clears throat> but uh, this meeting and what we are talking about doing uh, with the uh, uncommitted vote uh, is a profound statement that we are making. Black is back. Uh -huh. Black is back. Uhuru. Uhuru. Hands off Uhuru. Hands, Hands off, off Africa. Africa. Hands off Africa. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Free Leonard Peltier, Pel not one more year, and all political prisoners. Uhuru. From sea to shining sea, the indigenous people will be free. 
Uhuru. Uhuru. Drop the charges. Uhuru. Uhuru. Drop the damn charges. Drop the damn charges. <laughs> Oh, no. So we're gonna pull up some announcements um really quickly and comrades stay on with us and appreciate all the um you know solidarity in this movement. So Uhuru Caesar, good to see you, uh, comrade Karen. Um it's great to have you on. All right, comrades. So again, the Uhuru three trial is coming up. Um we want comrades to continue to let us know that you will be here. Email us at info at handsoffuhuru.org. Or like we said, put it in the chat. If you're just joining us now, we ask to, to let us know in the chat that you will be there on any platform and uh, please reach out, comrades. We also want to um, you know, really salute and appreciate um, the long uh, struggle and you know, hard, um, long lived struggle and life of um, comrade Ralph Pointer. There will be a memorial for him um, if you are in the Harlem, New York area. Um, you can, uh, you know, make sure that you can support this on March 21st. Uh, there's more information here. You can call 917-603-6160 at the Riverside Church. And we just wanted to salute and, you know, this, you know, revolutionary warrior, Brother Ralph Pointer. Um, so Uhuru and Presente. Uhuru. <laughs> Uhuru. And the African National Women's Organization is holding their ninth annual conference, the Black Women's Conference. This will be taking place this weekend in St. Louis. You can, you know, tune in virtually. But those of us who are going to be on the ground, we are very excited. This is, um, you know, titled African Women, Ta African Women Taking a Stand Against Imperialism, Colonialism and Neocolonialism. And this is March 22nd to the 24th in St. Louis. You can find out more information by going to convention.anwouhuru.org. And on Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time, so that's next week, Wednesday, the African People's Solidarity Committee is holding their monthly event, and they are calling on white people who are viewing today's meeting to register and participate for this event that will address how white feminism is a tool of colonialism and how white people can take a genuine anti-colonial stand by working under the leadership of the African revolution. So who you see pictured there is um, the special guest speaker, which is the president of the African National Women's Organization. This is President Yejide Oranmila, and this will be a great event. So you can find out more and register at apsciuhuru.org slash register. And the uh, the case of the of the Uhuru three is the case that we want to continue to bring everybody under. We want to in, um, remind everybody to go to handsoffuhuru.org slash slash register. The Hands Off Uhuru Fight Back Coalition will be holding a webinar on the um, on Saturday, March 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. We are saying all out for the trial. This is where, where we will be mobilizing for the trial, as well as, you know, really breaking down what this case is about, what is happening. You know, we will have our, you know, special guest speakers, including the the uh, legal team, um, as well as the Uhuru 3 and other guests. So we want to invite everybody to also be there as well. You can find out more by going to handsoffuhuru.org slash register. And last um, announcement for today is the Black is Back 8th Annual Electoral Campaign School, which was just referenced earlier, titled The Ballot and the Bullet, This Time Till It's One. This is on April 13th and 14th in St. Louis, and also um, virtual participation is also um, available. You can find out more by going to the Black is, uh, Black is Back Coalition .org. Um, And this is, again, a very important uh, time and period for us to be there on the ground. So try to get to St. Louis. There is housing information, anything that you might need, you know, hotels, things like that on that website. So Black is Back Coalition .org and click the eighth annual campaign school. So Uhuru comrades, uh, that's all we have for today. We look forward to seeing you. So, um, you know, this time till it's won, <laughs> the ballot or the bullet, hands off Uhuru. Uh -huh. And we are winning comrades. Uhuru. 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 Uhuru, everybody. Uhuru. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Guard up. Guard up. Relentless. 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 For another three hundred dollar pledge from MQ. All right, hey. we're talking over a thousand. Yeah, over a thousand. Yeah, we're doing. Come on, come